freed. So what to make of these moves by Israel? Are they really a sign of goodwill or something else? Joining me here in the studio is Fadi El Salamin. He's an adjunct senior fellow at the American Security Project and a fellow with the New America Foundation's American Strategy Program. So Fadi, we heard in that piece that Stephanie did, um, she pointed to a lot of changes on freezing tax funds, letting some Palestinian vehicles into Israel, letting them buy produce, are these significant moves or concessions or whatever you want to call them? Uh, not at all. They don't move the needle on the poli political spectrum. They don't move the needle on the ground at all. They are good signals. And I think w if I uh, read this correctly, I would um, believe that they're coming from Prime Minister Netanyahu to show or to signal to the uh, one, the American administration, to to the uh, rest of the world that although my government is going to be a right wing coalition government, I am trying to do something on the ground. Um, in the long run, they don't mean anything because at the end of the day, if you are not doing significant changes on the ground, you're not. If you're not giving, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people freedom of movement, if you are not uh, lifting checkpoints, if you are not allowing lifting the siege uh, on Gaza. No Palestinian politician can uh, interact, can engage on a level of insignificant uh, concessions like, like these. So in the long run, they don't mean anything at all, to be honest. In the piece, we also saw, um, beginning of our report, a Palestinian teenager killed, Israeli forces detaining two children ages 7 and 12 this week. Um, they're accused of throwing stones at Israeli bus. Their families say they were interrogated for hours. So I just want to focus a little bit on the young children of this conflict, Palestinians and Israelis. How have each side been impacted by lack of peace? Look, obviously, the people are the first casualty of this conflict, especially uh, children. You've just in this in this year, uh, well over 2,000 Palestinians have been killed. Um, if you look at Gaza or the West Bank, you're talking about uh, stress, uh, signs of well over 99% of the population, and the majority of it are young people. So uh, it's clear that the children are the major casualty. I'm sure they have statistics uh, on the Israeli side. I'm not aware, um, I'm not aware of them. But the, the question here is, is the following. What are the politicians going to do? This is, as of now, there's no clear objective, there's no clear outcome that anybody could say, well, we're working towards this. Everybody's saying, what can we do to maintain the status quo? Uh, let's open up a few borders, let's open up uh, a few checkpoints. This is not a long lasting solution. And what's being uh, overlooked is that people's patience is running out. You have, these are not random acts of violence. These are People just being fed up. They can't take the current situation anymore. And I believe what needs to be done is the following. The United States should be pushing for Palestinian presidential and parliamentary elections so that there's a unified Palestinian leadership that has the popular support of the Palestinian population. Two, the Palestinians should be allowed to use whatever measures they have in their hands to create leverage with the Israelis to negotiate. The ultimate objective is a final peace agreement. Everybody understands that. Nobody's deviating from that. But how do you get the Israelis to feel that they need to negotiate with the Palestinians? So Fadi, what, obviously Hamas controlling Gaza complicates this, this scenario you laid out because the Israelis are saying we are not going to negotiate with Hamas. So as long as Hamas controls Gaza, how do we accomplish what you're suggesting? There, there are a few ways. The number one way is to push the Palestinians to make unity within themselves. Israel does not have to negotiate directly with Hamas, even though Israel, by the way, negotiates directly and indirectly with Hamas today. They've negotiated the deal with the Israeli soldier, the release of the Israeli soldier in return. For, I mean, in, peace in, negotiations. But peace negotiations, Israel does not have to engage with, with Hamas. Hamas is not the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. It is the PLO, which is uh, the umbrella for the- Mahmoud Abbas, yes. Mahmoud Abbas, so, and, so they can, but they need to push Egypt, the local, the regional allies with the United States, they need to push for Palestinian unity. And but once, is there Palestinian unity? Aren't the Palestinians amongst themselves divided? Absolutely. There's unity. There's disunity within Fatah. You have the Dahlan camp. You have the Mahmoud Abbas camp. There's disunity between Hamas and Fatah. Yes. So, but that's why I say we need Palestinian elections because to overcome these obstacles, you need a unified Palestinian leadership. And until you have elections, there's no way around it. 
So wh where do you see this peace process in six months and a year from now? Are you optimistic? Are you hopeful? It's clearly, this is an issue that has been going on for decades. I'm not, if we continue the strategy of maintaining the status quo, then absolutely nothing new will happen except more chaos, more chaos which cannot be managed because we're on the Palestinian side, God forbid something happens to Mahmoud Abbas, he's an 80 year old man with not great health. If he dies tomorrow, what you ultimately have is complete, complete chaos. You have heads of security agencies who are corrupt in charge of economic interest, in charge of security interests within the West Bank. This will be competing against each other. And then on, on, on the Israeli side, who, are, who will they be talking to? We need Palestinian elections. I can't emphasize that anymore. We need Palestinian elections. Fadi Al-Salamin, thank you so much. Thank for you your for time. having me.